into the 1991 sequence, the shape that I hope you'll agree looks something like the Concorde.
the twizzle. Speed limit, stick your hand under the window, 
They've done all that sort of spin connection if they're doing these sort of displays. It's a, a very expensive hobby. It, it, it can be sponsored, so uh, it's great credit to the uh, An exit, and the canopies will open five seconds after they've exited the Andover, and they're uh, at 4,000 feet. The smoke coming out of the back, so it should be clearly visible to everybody. Just looking up slightly to the right of centre as the end over runs in. Smoke coming out from the uh, rear doors as obviously they're open with the team uh, ready to jump. Having said that, of course, one of the rules for the Falcons is there've got to be no propellers turning on the ground, and the crunchies are just taxiing in at the moment. So uh, I think we're going to have a just short gap while the end over repositions and waits for confirmation. That Probably one of the things worth mentioning, Tony, is the DZ party because that's a fairly critical part of the. Hi, Hi. Hi.
welcome to the Air Tour Darwin 9. Lined up on the grass in front of the runway. Thank you. 
got to have a sea carrier on display. Uh, so we we'll will carry it here. Thank you. 
precision formation flying and synchronized aeromatics. S2A, a two-seater aircraft, though naturally no passengers are carried during the display. Therefore the front cockpit has the windshield removed, the cockpit is blanked off, which gives it that very racy, long-nosed appearance. Now with their smoke streaming, pulling up into the first of the formation maneuvers. In Vic formation, Nigel leads the team into a loop-the-loop. The two wingmen in the Toyota Pit Specials maintaining distance of only a few feet from their leader. As light, Nigel leads them down to commence what looks like another loop. But we call this one a clover leap because of the shape left by the smoke trails in the sky. As the formation is necessary to withstand the stresses and strains of aerobatics. Now Nigel leads the team down for the inside-outside loop. So watch the two pit specials roll the right way up for half a Cuban while Nigel remains inverted. The force of gravity there, minus three G from the left and corkscrew through the barrel. As ever, a manoeuvre which is made to look easy but is very difficult indeed. In fact, while watching this manoeuvre, a six-year-old friend of my family was actually there to ask her dad what joins them together. And in fact, you could almost believe they were invisibly joined in a manoeuvre like this. Rolling through 540 degrees while Nigel Lamb flies up through the centre before disappearing and leaving the centre stage to find the knife edge pass. Arcing over at the top and now on the way down, rolling to present a pair of synchronised manoeuvres. Synchronised loops. So pulling hard control column, easing of the back pressure at the top to make sure we get a nice round circle, keeping the aircraft straight with the rudder, climbing vertically once more, then over the top, now watch the man on the right as he rolls to now fly back away from his fellow team member. And now we'll show a pair of synchronised to the left, they're diving back down through their own smoke trails before flying back into the centre for the spectacular Opposition flick roll. This is really a controlled high speed spin. The aircraft flicking one around the other and flying off to right and left while Nigel Lamb rolls in to attract your attention past five years and also placed him eighth in the European Aerobatic Championships in Toulouse a couple of weeks ago. The highest British placed pilot by some measure. Two seater with 300 horsepower. And those extra horsepower really do make the performance a lot better. Nigel learned to fly in the Rhodesian Air Force, first of all on the Piston Provost, and then on the Vampire Jet Trainer. And it was while flying the Vampire that he survived a forced landing in the bush when his engine failed. Well, his engine hasn't failed there, that's a very smartly executed stall turn. Unfortunately, Nigel Lamb recovered from that incident and went on to fly Alouette and then Bell Helicopters, ending his career in the Air Force as an instructor. He's been doing display flying in the UK since 1981, and he decided to have a go at competitions back in 86. He was second in his first attempt at the British National Championship, but has won the title every year since then, and also holds the British National Freestyle title as well. And back in line abreast, Josh Johnson sprawls away and the aircraft is left literally hanging on its propeller. Then at the leader's command, it's full left rudder, close the throttle, and down they dive. While from the right we see Nigel Lamb flying in at high speed, roaring as he goes for an exciting opposition pass with the formation pair. Did he go past them or was it between them? I don't know. Now we've got the sky full of aircraft and you can just imagine Nigel homing in on the two pit special because he's got to dive back down and slot into formation with them. So he rolls down in hot pursuit, having to judge his speed very carefully because he's got no air brakes and the Lexus x is such a slippery machine it's very easy to overshoot. So roaring down in hot pursuit of the two Toyota pit special you see, now see flying his aircraft inverted as we have a mirror image of the two pit specials while Nigel Mann barrel rolls very tightly around the formation pair. And what a pretty picture that There they go, arcing off to right.
60 degrees nose up, 90 degrees right flank, and flicking the shaft tail. carries out basic pilot training for all naval helicopter pilots. The shark's feet. Rotor base turning the tips of the blades are actually approaching 400 miles an hour and only some 15 feet apart in this manoeuvre. Jeff's got nearly 3,000 flying hours now. Only 600 of those hours are in the Gazelle aircraft. Rejoining the silver tip formation. Moving in and out, but you'll see that quite a lot of the 
the wording on the aircraft all in Russian. This uh, uh, Yakov, the design bureau, Yakov, uh, they again used to make fighter aircraft. It's larger than most of the aerobatic aircraft, quite big, but that's because it's a two-seater. Smoke trailing from the uh, smoke pods underneath uh, the left and right wings. They've got uh, the sort of construction, uh, constructor based at down in Dijon uh, uh, for the last 11 years. He created the concept of uh, this display team when he was 28 years old. Been with Jack since the uh, team were first formed. So this is now his 16th season. <laughs> like many mad Frenchmen, when he's not doing this sort of thing, he spends uh, the rest of the time skiing. Michel Hugo Verin, the number three, again former Air Force pilot from Marseille, structured in the on the Fuga Magister uh, squadron based at Strasbourg.
swept forward at the moment at about 45 degrees.
first extra, I think erroneously, we're getting another pass overhead from the Vulcan, so we'll enjoy that before I tell you about the Daily Express extra. in operation along Dartree Road, in inevitable ch children. It's kind of operation that me, you know, how are you? Right? He's around this point. I know Kenny caught you at that end. How, how's it going now? <laughs> I mean, any chance of, you know, the thing pulling you and then starting yourself or No, no, the alternator's jammed itself. The bearings have gone on the alternator. All oh, right. Can we have a good T-shirt on with uh, a pair of headphones walking past that caravan? I don't think you're really well worried about the fact you can't get one. It could just jump away if you try to scream, man. Um, <laughs> he's not listening. It's the after all that we've done for him. Oh, no. Yeah, that was just curious. And there was uh, a Sierra, a mage color Sierra, with a, uh, a Union jet flying from it as well. So he's listening to a very good one. Set hands out of the car. Anybody who's seen at the moment can see it uh, swingily, uh, swingily, quite smoothly. That'll do. <laughs> and that's the way we like to keep it. It's, uh, it's a quarter past six. Kenny Hague and Mark Hayman are our reporters around the airfield tonight, around uh, Stoughton, and they're reporting on the situation as far as the truck is concerned. Uh, it must be easing off, I should think. <laughs> Yeah. 